All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, I have Trinity Hall coach Matt McCarthy. Matt, thank you for joining me this uh, this evening. Give me some time. Uh, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me. This is great what you've been doing. I've been watching a lot of these uh, podcasts the last couple of weeks. It's really, really nice what you're doing for, for the group. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's gotten a lot of support, and, you know, I like it. And as long as, you know, everybody keeps watching, we're going to keep doing them. And uh, so I tell everyone, hopefully, you know, by next season, I could expand this a little bit more and, uh, you know, get some more uh, media attention out there to, you know, the girls' game. Well, I think every little bit helps, so that's much yeah. appreciated. Um, you know, I like starting off with talk about, you know, last season, you know, go, go through last season. When the season started, what was, you know, the goals you set and the message that, you, you know, you were trying to achieve uh, for, for, for last season? We, last year, we had five seniors uh, on the roster that were returning players. And um, so the expectations were greater um, than the year before. And what we were trying to do was win our division. Um, we were in the B Central and, and it wasn't it was it was just the division we were in. And we had some good games in that division. But we also uh, tried to establish a really hard non-conference schedule. Um, nobody knows who we are, and, and that's kind of what we've been trying to do the last couple of years is just try to play people. And, and um, sometimes we knew the outcome. Sometimes it just teaches them what, you know, teaches the kids a little bit of reality, you know, where we want to get to, you know, when we face these great teams. And um, so, you know, division, winning our division was number one. That was paramount. Try to steal a game or two, um, you know, in, in the non-conference schedule that we had, and, and um, you know, just try to get better. And I know that sounds so cliche-ish, but um, it's kind of what we've done the last two years. You know, I, I mean, I'll tell you a funny story. The first game that we played ever uh, as me as a girls' coach was two years ago against Marlboro, and we lost by, I, I mean, fifty maybe, and, and it could have been worse. It, it could, I mean, he. <laughs> But he, Brad, he called off the dogs going into the fourth quarter. And um, I was scouting them, and, and I was watching them play from the year before on huddle. And they were, like, running, like, backdoor cuts, and it was kind of slowed down, really deliberate, well run. And so that's what I scouted. And then I go watch them play live down in Tom's River East in a scrimmage. And they're doing that five in, five out, like a hockey game. Every yeah. two minutes, the people come in and out. And I'm like, I've seen a lot of basketball. I've seen people trapping corners. I've seen trapping the sideline, trap this person. But I'm like, there's no way in the world these guys play like this. I mean, he, somebody must be must have missed the bus. Uh, it's conditioning. And then, well, I guess so we we prepared for the year before. We got killed so bad. Um, it, we didn't know what hit us. I mean, that Romero kid, she was tremendous. And um, But you know what? Like, you you, you – we got killed and it's hard to learn when you lose by close to 50, but, but it did, it made us tougher. And I think all those games that we've always played, like Dave Callahan's a friend of mine. He was nice enough to put us on the schedule the last couple of years, you know, and, and Justin McGee invited us to his tournament, that autism tournament. Yes. We got to play St. John Vianney last year. I mean, it, you know, Here's how I looked at it, and I'm like, I don't know if our team believed it, but I'm like, you know, you guys get to say you played a nationally ranked team. Like, we, we got our ass kicked. We don't care about the nationally ranked team. But um, it was great to play them because you, you you really get to see how good these kids are, and um, it's just you know, it's been a pretty wild ride the last two years. I also saw last season uh, you had TCA. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. you know, so another, you know, so you know, them and St. John Vianney, you're playing. <laughs> they are, they were the top two teams in the state yeah. last yeah. season. I, you know, I the th that was the one disappointing game. Um, not because if we showed up, it would have been 50, 60 points. I'm, I'm not trying to, say, but yeah. it was, it was. Um, we were afraid that game. They okay. were a dominant, dominant team. They, they just um, in every. It's so is Saint John Vianney. I, they're, I, you know, it's just, it's just amazing how good those two teams are and how deep they are and well coached. They just, uh, but we, we came out. We were at St. Trenton Catholic's Christmas tournament, and I think the game started at noon. It, it was over by twelve oh three. It was, it was, it was a tough long bus ride home. Um. One of, one of your, you know, key seniors, you know, Caitlin, um, I don't, I'm not going to 
butcher her last name. Um, was it? Yeah. She, now she last season she battled injuries last season, right? Was it last season she she was yeah. hurt? On yes, and off. Um, she, was. she had she had some um, back problems um, in the preseason, so that kind of limited her to getting ready for the season. She fought through it, and then uh, late in the season, it was at Modern Day, a Tuesday night. She dislocated her finger um, mm -hmm. pretty severely, and um, so she missed the rest of the season um, because of that. Uh, I guess it, it, we only had five games, you know, it's like the modern day game was, the, the, I believe it was the second to last regular or third to last regular season game. So uh, it was really unfortunate. She couldn't fit, you know, she wanted to be out there and it was unfortunate. She couldn't be. Yeah. That had to hurt, you know, especially when, you know, you go up against skill St. Bernard and States, and, you know, having the big, you know, they have their big body and yeah. uh, you know, you, you, unfortunately yours was injured. Um, it, yep. It was tough. But she's doing well. I mean, she's she's you know she's obviously down at William and Mary now, and and you know she's learning that learning down how to you know play in college, and she's they got a pretty good team. I'm following them, so uh, I I know she'll she'll come out of it stronger. That's good. Uh, moving moving to you know this season, uh, what are some of the challenges? Um, you know, you're, you're, you're seeing, I mean, you know, you're seeing already or that you expect to see, or that you think the, the players have to deal with for this season. I, you know, it's, it's such a fluid situation. I mean, things can change day to day. So, so yesterday we're, we're on our way to practice. It's 30 minutes before it starts. And we, we find out about, you know, somebody testing positive. So we, we have to shut the team down and um, that it's keeping the kids mentally prepared you know I, I think they're all getting kind of I don't want to say used to it but it, it, it's become more normal in the last yeah. you know eight nine months and, and they've all played sports um, in the summertime in the fall and, and we're trying to get into the into the winter but things can just change in in, in, in a drop of a dime you know so that that's the thing they're trying to keep them mentally prepared um, like having that phone call with them today, that Zoom call with them today, telling them that it's going to be all right and we're going to be back out there in 12 days. And it, it, I felt for them. I mean, I really, really did. They, they, you could just see it in their faces how, how deflated they were because it's been, pro, you know, suspended or, or prolonged for a couple different times. And finally get there and have a good week of practice and then all of a sudden, okay, now you got to wait a couple more weeks. You know, you just got to kind of keep that hope. You know, um, uh, other challenges, I mean, from an athletic standpoint, I mean, um, we're young. We're mm -hmm. a really young team. We have two seniors, two juniors, um, a bunch of sophomores, and, you know, a, a few good freshmen. So it's going to be um, every rep you can get would really help the younger players, even if it's in practice. So, you know, hopefully we can get back out there soon. Yeah, you know. I saw your, your team quite a bit, you know, during the summer, you know, the summer league and then uh, the wall, the wall fall league, I think, um, which to me was probably beneficial, you know, because I know the coaches were not, you know, they, they restricted the amount of time this season, you know, this in the off season. So having a young team and them in those, you know, uh, helps, you know, them trying to build the chemistry, um, especially, you know, you have a, a, a good uh, incoming freshman class. Um I want to start we'll start talking about the two seniors, uh, you know, Emma Bradley uh, returning and um, who's uh, Cameron? Is Cameron playing? No, Cameron's playing, but she's only a junior. So um, the oh, other. Oh, yeah, she was a sophomore this year. Yes. Yeah. So the other. Um, sorry for moving around. <laughs> That's right. I thought my dog just came into the room. So <laughs> the, the Cecilia Peters is 6'3 uh, lefty. You know, very young for her class. Just just got her driver's license as a senior, and um, she she's a nut. You know, she's a three sport athlete. Played played you know cross country, does outdoor track, and plays basketball. Okay. Um, and then Emma has played, and and Cecilia's been with us the last two years as well. You know, has played like in all fifty four games with us. Emma has played twenty five minutes um, in all of our meaningful games the last couple of years. Um, she's learned a lot from playing, you know, with Caitlin and a girl, Colleen Kelly, who graduated last yeah. year. Um, she's a captain this year, definitely one of our leaders. Um, 
It, so yeah, the, it's you know I, I don't think either one of them um, has any aspiration uh, to play in college, mm -hmm. and and um, I know Emma could, um, mm -hmm. but because there was a few coaches who have asked about her because she's mm -hmm. had a couple of good games against kids who were getting recruited, mm -hmm. so there was some serious interest. But I think this is it, and that's what kind of makes it hard because. They're two great, great kids. And just like every school, you know, mm -hmm. has some great seniors and you want to get these kids out there and, mm -hmm. and give them this last chance. So, um, you know, ho hopefully for everyone, but but really deep down for these two, knowing this yeah. is their last shot that we can get something going. Yeah. Um, what do, you know, your two seniors, what do you expect them or what, what are you hoping they pass on to the, you know, your underclassmen? It. They'll they'll pass on the, the, the way the school the school is it's um, Trinity Hall is a, it's a it's a it, you know and I'm a public school and a private school advocate I think that the state of New Jersey has unbelievable schools both mm -hmm. public and private and I'm not trying to go one way or the other Trinity's it, it, there's like a bond there's a sisterhood amongst these girls and I think it starts because the school is so small. Like they had to get along with everybody else. There wasn't a big class, you know. I mean, let uh, two years ago, my first year of graduating class was twenty-two kids, so they all get along with one another. F freshmen, seniors, and they're all there for one another. And you see that with teams all over the place. But that's what I want them to to, to pass along. Like you have to be there for the next person coming in. You got to teach them what's expected of me, um, what's expected of uh, from me, and what's expected of them. And just try to pass along the culture that we're trying to create. Um, you know, they've been living it for three years. And, I, you know, I, I know that they will be really good, um, you know, doing that. That's great. Um, now, you have two juniors, right, this this season? Yeah. Uh, you know, it starts with, you know, Haven. Everybody knows she's a, you know, multi-sport, you know, athlete too. Um was second in your team in points, you know, led the team in assist. What is, a, you know, having such a good player, you know, especially, you know, she was only a sophomore last year, you know, lead, you know, lead the team, you know, as a point guard. It, it's invaluable. I mean, she, she is um, pound for pound, like the top, top, toughest three kids I've ever coached. And, you know, I've co I used to coach in, you know, a, a pro and the guys who played overseas and stuff like that and not take anything, but this kid just loves to compete and, mm -hmm. and she's going to bring it. I mean, she, she knew what was coming against some of these point guards we played and, and she just gets back up. I mean, you'd see her after a game, she's five foot two, it's a hundred pounds. She's got scratches, black eyes. She, <laughs> she just doesn't care. She's going to come and, and uh, it's, you know, it's going to help her this year because we have some guards that can play a little bit. Um, it's going to take a little bit of the pressure off her because you notice with all the good teams, like the scanner report against us and against her, it, it, you know, was, was, and she'd admit this. I mean, like she, they would want to force her to her left hand and they would prefer her to shoot than to drive to the basket because mm -hmm. she's pretty damn quick. Um, but she always comes ready to go practice games and and you never ever ever have to you almost take it for granted you you know she's got she's going to be there and she's going to be there until the end and um it's great that she's pretty smart i mean she's i mean obviously you know you hear people say well this kid doesn't play in a competitive nature so they don't play against the killers and stuff like that it's high school sports right so mm -hmm. she might not be playing basketball against you know the best players in the world all year round, but she's an Under Armour All American in lacrosse. Yeah, yeah. she's the first team All Shore Conference as a freshman. I'm not worried of her competitive nature. She, yeah. she Caitlin Decker of Red Bank Regional. Yeah. I mean, she's unbelievable soccer player. They yeah. beat RBC two years ago because she knows how to compete. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think in high school. You know, yes, would you want twelve kids who play year round basketball? That's all they do. That'd be great, but. I love kids. I'll take the alternative, like yeah. kids who like to compete and, and multi-sport athletes, you know, any day of the week. Uh, the next one we'll talk about, you know, Cameron Keene. Um, great to me, great soccer player. You know, I, I know her well on the soccer field, was one of my, you know, she was my second team all sure. Uh, just talk about her, you know, basketball sense and what she brings to the team. She's great. I, You know, she's another one who's played – in every game and she's played 25 plus, you know, in all the meaningful games since her freshman year. And 
it's hard to keep her off the court. I mean, she she played at St. Catherine's Grammar School for Ellen Masonis. So okay. she knows how to play, right? Uh, she's w- really well coached, you know, in, in grammar school. Soccer is obviously her thing. Mm-hmm. And again, she's another one of these kids. She plays for a high-level club team. She's a high-level D1 recruit for soccer. Yeah. So she's a legit 5'9". She's quick as hell. Mm-hmm. And so – you're not going to, she's, she's a plus, she's a plus minute person. And it, like her intensity and her coverage and her length, you know, it, it's, it's invaluable. It is. I mean, you can, you can put her pretty much anywhere or on anybody on defense and it's just, and then, and then knowing soccer, like I, I'm a big soccer fan as well. And she gets it from being a midfielder. Like she yeah. gets possession changes. So like yeah. if we get a steal or a deflection, she's leaking out. She gets it. Like, it's kind of like being on a soccer field. I think the two of them transfer pretty well together, like the two sports, you know, she angles and, and spacing and all that sort of stuff. So she's she was looking great all week, um, you know, being back playing basketball. And, uh, you know, someone will really count on. Yeah. Um, you had a whole bunch, you know, a couple freshmen that, you know, had, had roles with your team uh, last, last season. I'm going to go through, you know, I'm just going off the NJ.com roster. Um, first one, uh, uh Sydney, uh, yeah. Comesso, Comesso, is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, look, just looking at stats, looks like she does, you know, a little bit of everything, you know, rebound, score, a steal. Do you expect her to have a bigger role, role this season? I do. I, you know, I, I think, um, she plays on an AAU team based out of Tom's River and I, I forget, you know, I forgive, I, I forgot the coach's name, but he, he really, he, it might be the start of Bombers maybe. Okay. But he he he's a really good coach. Like these kids aren't the um, you know sneaker company AAU players, and they're not th- this or that. But the, he knows how to coach, and she knows how to play. Uh-huh. And you know she'll she's a tough kid, and she 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 definitely she's the youngest of eight. Oh wow! So that that <laughs> helps. Like she's used to like you know taking care of her business. So um, I do expect her to play a, a bigger role. Some of the other kids, like Molly Mark, who's on that roster, she's not coming back. She's going to do indoor track. Okay. Um, Ella Doherty uh, is coming back. You know, a lot of these girls are going to be able to compete for time. Mm-hmm. Um, Paige Janicki, Jill DeSeo, she led her. Jill DeSeo is a good soccer player. She played mm-hmm. soccer last year, and she um, she's played soccer last few years. She's She's a really good athlete. So all these kids have been, you know, committed to our team and to other sports. And I think they can all help in certain ways. And, you know, it's, it's still so, it's why it really hurts being out for 12 days because those decisions weren't, weren't um, yeah. set in stone yet. Um, next, I want, you know, you have a, a, a couple of good freshmen coming in. Um, I don't, obviously I don't have their names, you know, I know a couple of them, but uh, can you just talk about the freshmen that you're coming in and what do you expect out of them? Yeah, they're um, – Nina Emnes is um, a guard from Tom's River. She's a, she's a really good player. Um, you know, like like all these fresh – Siobhan Stapleton's another one. You know, her mm-hmm. older sister's um, a senior at St. Rose, and she has another older sister who plays at Gettysburg. So it's kind of like in the Stapleton blood. She, mm-hmm. she, she She's a basketball player, another one who played for Mrs. Masonis at St. Catherine. So yeah. it really gets the game. Um, they both play for the New Jersey Bells. Um, Allie Napatolano their coach who really knows what she's doing. Her kids, her daughter played at St. Rose a few years back. And, and Allie's, you know, won state championships on the AAU level. She's a former college coach. So they're getting really, really good, good coaching, you know, from, from their AAU program. And then Hala Dora, um, Haven's little sister, she's another one long, athletic had a great cross country season this fall i think she was second team yeah. all sectional or something like that I, I forgot how they did it this year yeah. but but she did really well and she's another lacrosse player but she loves playing basketball so all three of those kids i've seen play a bunch um they will all be i'll be leaning on them pretty hard um if they're gonna have to grow up pretty quick um, yeah, especially, uh, you know, during the, the fall league, uh, you know, Nina, Nina st- stood out. I mean, you know, somebody, had, I didn't know she was a freshman, somebody, you know, one of the P 
people I was I was with said, you know, she's on, she, she's an incoming freshman, and it's like, oh, I go, she, she, you know, she looks like she's ready to, you know, ready ready to go at this level. Yeah, she's she's really she's really talented. She loves it. She lives in the gym. She she played other, you know, she played soccer. She actually scored a goal in the uh, state game against Donovan Catholic. Oh. And, uh, but <laughs> that was a good game. I I didn't make it there, but I because. Uh, Right, Donovan Catholic was up, I think, two to one. Yeah, yeah. And and Trinity came back and won three to two. Because uh, she, she admits it, she went to cross it, and she said the wind took it. Went <laughs> went for the goal. Anyway, you get it, right? Yeah, you know it's funny. I was at uh during the regular season. It was Manasquan versus uh, Colts Neck soccer regular season. And they played over at the 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 military base over there in Seeger, and it was cold and it was windy. And Colts Neck took a corner kick. And the ball just it just blew like like completely blew. Nobody knew if it was even a goal, like if it was allowed <laughs> to be a goal. Everyone just stood and watched. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bless you. So it, it's just fun, you know. Those those ha- those things happen in soccer. <laughs> but, they do. They do. And it all, but, all looks the same the next day in the scoreboard. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, did, I didn't know she, she played soccer too. I didn't know. Yeah, that. she she's she's a, she's a really talented kid. I mean, she's um. She, I think, you know, she'll admit basketball is her first love. She has a lot of goals and expectations for herself. She's a, all three of those kids are exceptional students, um, you know, as far as, you know, what, what the, the classes that they're taking and the workload that they're, they're taking. Um, that's kind of one, one of the things that's kind of a, I, I, I'm a little spoiled as a coach and I know there's great students everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but these kids vision is, like what I, I didn't know what I wanted to do until I was, you know, 40 years old. And, and uh-huh. these, these kids are like what uh you know, freshmen and they're they're talking about where, you know, what they want to study and what they want to pursue. And they they it's just got their heads on their shoulders so well. And I I find it with a lot of these girls around here. You know, I talk to the other coaches, these kids are just so they got blinders on and they know what they want to do. It's 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 amazing. And I got a good group of parents because they kind of stay out of um, shouldn't put it that way. They're, they're involved as much as they want to be, mm-hmm. but they kind of leave the basketball stuff to, to the coaches and, and let us coach their kids, which is, um, you know, makes our job a lot easier. You know, speaking of, you know, the kids and, you know, what they want to do, you know, doing the player interviews, it's amazing what they say, you know, like you said, you know, it, it, it took a while for me to figure out what I want to do, but, you know, they're freshmen and, they all got high grade point average that, you know, they, they want to be lawyers, doctors, physical therapists. You know, when I was that age, I either put, you either played sports or you were book smart. You didn't, you didn't yeah. do both. It, exactly. it, it, it's impressive how they find, you know, they find the time to, you know, keep their grades at such a high level, you know, and play, you know, athletics at such a high level. Yeah. And, and there's so there's that, and that's just another thing to go back to competitive nature. I mean, they're competitive. They want to, they want to be towards the top of their class, these kids. I mean, Look at some of the girls that are, have signed and some of the schools have, they've used athletics to get places. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the girl from Homedale is going to Williams. Mm-hmm. I mean, at Williams, Cortland McBaron, Williams. I mean, these, these are uh, Matt, Maddie St. Rose, Princeton. Princeton right? yeah. You know what I mean? Like Grace Mon, Holy Cross. Mm-hmm. These are like, you know, these are great kids, really good athletes who, are, I mean, the girl, uh, Justin's player, um, Sophie, she's going to Dickinson, I believe. That's mm-hmm. another great school. These kids are just, it's just, it's just, it's, we're, we're pretty spoiled around here. Like, I mean, it's a competitive nature. There's a lot of really, really good kids. Uh, there's a lot of great programs out there. Um, you know, it's it's just we're, we're lucky. We are. Yeah, that's why I stick to the shore. I, I get asked, you know, expanding, but, you know, just the shore because, you know, like you said, we are spoiled around here. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yep, no question. Uh, last thing before, you know, before I let you go, um, your schedule and uh, – you know, your division, you play, you know, Marlboro, you know, Middletown South, uh, Friel Borough, Manalp, and, you know, Friel Township. Um, what did, do you like the way they did the, the pods this season? And are you a fan of the way they're doing, you know, the, the postseason where there's a couple different, you know, there's going to be a couple different levels of uh, postseason tournament? I, I, I think the way they did the postseason is excellent because it's it gives everybody a chance to get a few more games, right? right. Um, if you did it the normal way, only half the or a little bit more than half the short conference teams would make the short conference tournament, which would eliminate the other half. They wouldn't get a game, and then you you know half the teams knocked out the first round, yeah. right? 
So now you're going to do it with, with groups of eight and everyone's going to is guaranteed three games. I, I think that's an excellent idea. Mm-hmm. Um, realigning the teams. I, I guess I'm a fan of it. I, I don't understand. I guess it's demographic. I mean, yeah, it, this year's dem- yeah, demographics. And it's cool. I mean, I love to play. If you look at our non-conference schedule the last two years, we'll play, we, yeah. we we'll play people. And, um, we get to play some really good teams. I think Mike Stoyer's team at Free Old Township yep. is is excellent. So I, I. I think they're so well coached. Um, you know, we played them twice last year, and both games could have went either way. Like if 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 we won the first game, it wouldn't have surprised me. If they won the second yeah. game, it wouldn't have surprised me. It, yeah. it, you know, and you just know what he's going to do, and they don't care. They're like, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> we run it really well and try stopping. And, and and you can't. They got that point guard. Um, Ellsbury. Yeah, yeah, the one of the sisters. I remember telling our kids in the scouting report the first time we played them. I'm like, this, this girl. Because the, the think all these coaches. I shouldn't say all, a lot of coaches lie about the stats, you know. But the thing you can't lie about is points. There's yeah. two scorekeepers, so yeah. they have to add up. <laughs> so, um, so you go to NJ.com and you excuse me one second. Yeah, no problem. You go to NJ.com and, and you see how many foul shots this girl would make a game. And, and I did the math and I'm like, this is like eight makes a game. She's not shooting hundred percent. So she's going on the line 10 ga- time, times a game. And I'm like, you know, this is, that's a skill. Yeah. She's going to, she's going to just bait you in. Mm-hmm. And she did. She went to the line again. She made two big free throws the first time with like seven seconds to go. They ended up winning the game. Um, just a really good player. His sister can shoot from the parking lot. Hannah Alloff is, is a really good player. All the other kids, they all know what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. Marlboro's team is is another team, really well coached. I don't know if they're going to continue to do the style that they've done the last two years. If they, Who knows? Um, I'm sure he's going to do what's best for his team, and you're going to have to be ultra prepared for those guys. Tom Brennan's been doing this forever. Um, he's a, another one who's a great coach. We have, the, I don't know a lot about Manalapan or Freehold Borough because I never played them mm-hmm. and I'm sure they're really good too. I mean, there's really no off days in this whole, in this whole schedule. So uh, I'm excited about it. I mean, Freehold Borough, I, 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 we, yeah, we, we scrimmaged them two years ago. That's all, really all I know. They had, uh, I saw them once last year. They had a sophomore shooter. I could, she could shoot. Like okay. well, probably one of the best shoes I saw it, you know, and nobody knows of her because, you know, it's free old borough. It's not, re- you know, the last couple of years, not really a basketball, you know? So, but when I said, I was like, wow, this girl could shoot. So. Um, oh, good. We open up against them. She's probably going to have 10 threes. <laughs> and I, was, I told you, Nick Lowe told us that this girl can shoot. You guys didn't pay attention to me. What the hell's wrong with you guys? <laughs> um, and uh, Manalik and I, I saw them the first one of the first games of the year last season, so I don't really remember. I know they had one big body that was young. That was a, I think she was a sophomore last year. That's a group four school, right? That's a big. Yeah, I Manalpin, I believe, is group four. Yeah, and it's kind of cool because I played at CVA long time ago, but these were the teams we played. Yeah, yeah. this was the old A North. A lot of them, but in yeah. the A North. Um, so I, I, you know, I think these guys. There's a lot of good people behind all this stuff, and they're they're trying to make it best for for the kids, whatever way they can do it. And it's um, it's it's a difficult time. It's not just sports, you know. I mean, oh, yeah. So many things are so many people are affected by this. So it's just trying. It's trying to do the best we can to get these guys something, you know. Yeah, you know, and hopefully, you know, we get through it, and hopefully by next season, you know, we're back at it normal. I, I think so. I mean, yeah, I think I think what what if there is any promise? I mean, last last spring the kids lost their spring season, um, yeah. but but then it works in outdoors. Like outdoors, yeah. summer season worked out. The fall yeah. season worked. So like I, you know, it's for these kids who lost last spring season. You know that I I would feel very confident to say they're they're going to be able to get something in this this spring. Yeah, and it's promising that the state, you know, announced that they are planning to do a full spring season with a, you know, state full state tournament, which you know, you know, it's good because you know there was no talk about that in the for the fall season and the you know winter season. Oh, exactly, exactly right. So, and it, it's everything's changed. I mean, they have all the stuff with the college kids. They they're getting a year of eligibility back, and it's just it, the whole recruiting process is going to be um, it's going to change. Well, it has changed. It's changed big time. But I, I, I you know. We again, it's it's not. I just keep hoping 
and, and praying everyone keeps doing the right thing so we can try to get these kids something. Exactly. You know? I mean, exactly. A lot of kids out there are 918 points, you know, they want to get that thousand points. There's kids who like, you know, there's their, like the R2 seniors, this is it for them, you know, to get them something. There's just, there's a lot of reason for, for it, you know, so I, I think it's hopeful. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I'll let, I'll let you go. I appreciate you uh, joining me tonight and I, I wish you and the team luck and, you know, hopefully 12 days you're back at it. Uh, thanks, Nick. I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll see you. I'll talk to you during the season. Thanks. Oh, for absolutely. Me. Okay. No problem, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.